So welcome everyone. We are so excited to have with us today uh, a, uh, Dr. Anita Archer to engage with us in a conversation around how to adapt explicit instruction for distance learning, uh, something that I know is on a lot of people's minds. And uh, with a particular focus on engaging students with word reading difficulties, um, oftentimes those are students who can be difficult to reach even in the most ideal circumstances. And so we are, we are very, very honored to have an expert with us who really can talk about the most important and critical element of that, which is certainly the engagement. Um, and so I just want to introduce myself first. Um, I'm Monica Ng. Uh, I am the Vice President of Education Programs at Pivot Learning. And I am joined by my uh, beloved colleague, Carrie Thomas Beck. Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Carrie Thomas Beck and I am the Director of Literacy for CORE, which stands for the Consortium on Reaching Excellence in Education. So welcome, Dr. Archer. Thank you so much. What an honor to be here uh, and to share ideas with all of you who are serving children uh, right now uh, and making a big difference with them in the area of reading. To mute or not to mute, that is the question. Uh, and it, uh, the problem is, I really saw this back on April 5th, which was my birthday during the pandemic. Uh, and I had a group of friends who wanted to sing happy birthday. So they got all on at the same time. They even had a conductor to direct them. And it was pathetic because they could not get the voices together. They kept repeating it and repeating it because the transmission time is different based on the computer. And uh, so uh, here's the first thing I would do. Uh, and that is I would check it out with the group I have. Now, some of you are gonna teach one person, it's not gonna be a problem, but then we core responses are done when we have more than one student. And our goal is to get more responses from everyone. And the reason that we have choral responses in word level teaching is that we want the students to read words, sound out words, say the sound, say parts of words, uh, and we can increase each individual's number of responses by having them do it chorally. So if we're at a small desk or a table and we're teaching a small group, choral responses is one of the best ways to intensify the lesson. In fact, uh, one of the recent reviews of research on opportunities to respond concluded that uh, one of the best ways to intensify intervention, which all of you are involved in, is increasing the opportunities to respond. So choral responses are used for that uh, in normal situations, which we're not now. Uh, and so uh, let me just uh, do a little test here. Uh, and so looking at me, uh, say the word reading, everyone. Reading. Okay, notice that little test showed that you weren't together. Let's try it again. Uh, the word is reading and say reading. Reading. Okay, so it wasn't too far off, but if I had more students, we would immediately see the challenge here. So. The first thing to do is to test it. If you can get, if you have a small number of children and you can actually hear the choral responses, then unmute them. But you might want to mute them um, if they are a large group, or you might want to mute certain children like the, I just finished, just finished before this interview, a webinar where the moderator had a barking dog. So took our attention so away from what we were doing uh, and that she had to yell out, husband, come get the dog. Uh, so, and that's another reason why we mute children is so that they can hold, hold in, hone in on the most critical information. Now, I'm going to just show you some options because your concern is how am I going to keep the kids engaged if they are uh, muted, uh, but their cameras are open, but they are muted. First thing, so this is, and forgive me, this is 
uh, from a demonstration I did for a program that I wrote phonics for reading, but it could be adapted to any situation. So we have this on the screen uh, and uh, I have a cursor and I want you to notice that my cursor when it is under, let me just put this, I may not be able to, yeah, I can use the cursor this way. Uh, and so let's say that they are all muted and I say, Listen to me sound out this word, watch my cursor. Uh, plan, plan, and plan. Say it with me, everyone. Plan, and the word is plan. Yes, the word is plan. Uh, and let's round out the next one. Listen to me, stay, stay. Sound it out with me. And I'm going to watch your mouth moving and be saying it out loud. Stay. And the word is stay. So here's what you're going to do is you cannot hear them. They can hear you. In this case, I am modeling sounding it out and then doing it with them and then having them say it. The important thing to learn here is how to give them feedback. Yes, stay so that they get, because they couldn't hear everyone in their group, you're gonna give them feedback, yes, stay. Let me model it one more time. Watch me sound out this word, eight. Watch the cursor, say the sounds with me, eight. And say the whole word, bait, yes, bait. All right, now, how are you gonna hold them accountable though? So we have read all of these words. Let's go back and read them quickly. Follow the cursor. What word? Yeah. Yes, plan. What word? Yes, stay. What word? Yes, bait. What word? Main. Excellent. Put your finger on the word that means the most important idea. Put your finger on the word that means the most important idea. Is your finger under main? Yes, main. Let's listen to uh, Carrie read these words. Unmute, Carrie. Plan, stay, bait, main. Excellent. So here's what I've added. If, if the kids are going to be muted and they give an answer, you're going to give feedback. You're going to say yes, and you're going to say the answer is feedback. That's number one. Number two, um, I am going to have some kind of physical action that you're going to do that will, you know you're going to be held accountable, so you pay attention. Uh, so touch underneath the word. Uh, that means the most important thing, main. Uh, and I'm going to call on individuals. So the practice is done, muted, but then I unmute to do uh, uh, basically the checking of understanding. So we can do it, uh, but we have to add some things that we won't normally do if we have a small group in our intervention in normal times. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us with our for our time with Anita Archer. Uh, I think that was just an amazing experience. And we just want to remind you that Pivoting Core, we have uh, 20 plus years of experience in supporting districts and schools with sustainable systems, as well as delivering curriculum and implementation services for ELA and math. Um, and we're just so committed uh, to improving teaching and learning so that more students have that opportunity to receive an excellent education. And I just wanted to take the opportunity first to share some free resources that are available on the CORE website. And specifically, I wanted to highlight our Word Reading Difficulties Resource Library. And so if you go to the home page, you will see a link to this library. And in this library, we have all different types of resources, uh, things like articles, white papers, videos, um, you name it, links to resources online related to teaching reading. So definitely go check this out. Um, it's a nice curated 
list of resources that I think will be helpful to you. And then also um, I wanted to share that CORE has a long history of providing on-site support for schools who are really working purposefully towards implementing the science of reading in classrooms. And uh, we have also been able to transfer those services to the remote environment. So for those of you who are interested, we offer um, packages of 10 hours of remote consulting or face-to-face -face once we get back to that point that are completely customized to your team's specific needs. We have educational consultants who will work with your team to address your specific sites goals, challenges, and capacity building needs around both English language arts as well as mathematics. And Pivot also uh, focuses on specifically on prevention and intervention services that you may be thinking about specifically for your students with word reading difficulties and dyslexia. And so some of the work that we support is around designing and implementing multi-tiered systems of support, uh, which include things like screening and progress monitoring that are really critical for students who uh, can experience difficulties with word reading. Um, we've supported the work with districts around their policies and systems around how do we quickly identify and support students who may be struggling with reading or have learning disabilities. Uh, we also can support work around your compliance related to special education and just how you deliver and align the delivery of general and edu special education. Um, and we're really dedicated to building the capacity in districts for implementing evidence-based curricula and really delivering that high quality instruction for all students. So you can reach us uh, at our websites, through our websites uh, or email, and also on social media, both Twitter and Facebook, um, we have um, places where you can follow us. And uh, we really hope that uh, you were as inspired by the conversation with Anita Archer as we were, and will reach out to us if we can be of any support or assistance in any way to you as you uh, navigate this world of virtual teaching, uh, but always remembering that good instruction is good instruction. So thank you so much for being with us again.